after consultations with the country's wildlife experts, we chose to have a one-day visit to the famous Oldenyo Sabuk National Park. A 40 minutes drive from the city landed us in a breathtaking environment with lots of wealth in nature. The park plays host to several guest houses where you can spend the night before waking up to a hiking day to the peak of the Oldenyo Sabuk Mountain. <laughs> The word Oldunya Sabuk, meaning large mountain in Maasai language, was dubbed Kilimambogo by the surrounding communities owing to the dominant animals at the park, the buffalo. <laughs> It is believed that the animals often visit the mountain in such of greener pastures as the animals found at the park includes baboons, bushbucks, impala, among others. Our ride to the peak of the mountain also exposed us to various picnic and camping sites with a clear view of Nairobi and other lowland areas. Tourists are said to flock the park for an adventure in the wild, especially during dry weather seasons. We sell this park especially to people who like uh, hiking, who cannot make it to, to big mountains like Mount Kenya. The late Lord Macmillan was the first owner of this great piece of land before it was inherited by the Kenyan government. Macmillan, a British national, came in Kenya in 1901 for a hunting mission before he turned to farming. Famed for his wealth, Macmillan established the city's Macmillan Library with his legacy still upheld by the Kenyan government. His wish was to be buried at the peak of the mountain, but due to poor transport network, the late Macmillan was buried at the middle of the mountain together with his wife, house help, and a pet. Initially, this was the proposed grave site for the Lord Macmillan and his family, and plans are underway to exhume the body from the other end to this spot. The 7,000 feet mountain regarded by the Agikuyu and Akamba communities as God's subsidiary home after Mount Kenya stands close to the amazing 14 falls in Thika. The falls are among the famous falls in the country. Erin Ichuma, Matko Saints, in the county of Machakos. ride to the jungle that is Nairobi National Park located so close to the city center took us approximately 20 minutes from the central business district and here the performance of the Maasai artists took our breath away. Nairobi National Park standing on 117 square kilometer piece of land is believed to be the only ecosystem in the world within a capital city. The park has a variety of animals as well as birds with a number of the wildlife protected within the park's animal orphanage. Yeah. Meet Patricia and Patrick, two beautiful warthogs that were named after two of the wardens at the park. Aguambo, Safi and Samburu, aged five each, are among the few lions rescued from Samburu some years back, while Patters represents the primates. <laughs> The orphanage also plays host to Black Manga Bay, Cheetahs, Leopards, Savile Cat, among others. A ride within the park will expose you to a wider range of wildlife, from giraffes to antelopes. Picnic sites are other hidden treasures within Nairobi National Park. The sites are deliberately set up for family and friends gatherings and any other outdoor activity, including weddings at an affordable fee. In addition, the park is surrounded by a number of lodges. Besides being among the most unique ecosystems that is close to the city, Nairobi National Park was the first park to be gazetted in East Africa, that was in 1946, offering a strong connection with the beauty of nature. And after a ride in the jungle, one would probably need such a serene for a good rest. The luxurious hotels receive a huge turnout of visitors, especially over the weekends. Well, tourists already adore Kenya. Um, 
we see a need for people coming into Nairobi. It's a mobile camp uh, whereby we might decide to move from this place and uh, to another area of the park. We are within the park. We are totally different. It feels like you are within uh, Masai Mara. And as the weekend draws near, Twende to Jibinzari, the best way we know how. You pay some fee, you are brought to the park, you are taken round, they stop at the picnic sites, you enjoy your picnic, you are taken back to town. Irene Nchuma, Magical Sense in the county of Nairobi. The second highest mountain in Africa and the highest in the country proudly stands on the central highlands on approximately 150,000 square kilometers feet of land touching on several counties. The mountain popularly known for climbing, hiking and dipping activities is one of the few places near the equator on Africa with permanent glaciers. Traditionally, the Agiku community regarded the mountain as the realm of Ngai with the community's homes built facing the believed sacred peak. The awe-inspiring site is surrounded by Mount Kenya's National Reserve. The forest is ideal for game viewing and abounds with crystal clear mountain streams. Rising from the jungles that border Uganda stands Mount Elgon, an impressively rocky extinct volcano. The rocks are surrounded by plenty of wildlife and discoveries, offering ideal peaks for climbing. The mountain boasts of a number of caves collectively known as El Coni, with the famous of them all being Kitum. Miles away lies the Great Rift Valley, a hilly region that prides itself for eye-catching sceneries featuring Mount Longonot. The dormant volcano rises to at least 2,700 meters above sea level, creating a breathtaking environment from the hustle and bustle of the city centers. The Great Rift Valley region also plays host to a number of hills, including the Nandi Hills, Gong Hills in the outskirts of Nairobi, Lota Hills in Naro County, and Shimba Hills in Kwale County are among the many other tourist destination spots in the country. And after a ride in the jungle, one can take a rest from the nearly situated luxurious and traditional homes of Kenya. Erin Uchuma, Magical Sense. The unique wooded ecosystem rich in flora and fauna welcomes you to Shimba Hills National Reserve located at the south coast in the county of Kwale. Believed to be the only park in the country to host sable antelopes, Shimba Hills National Reserve is approximately 198 square kilometers. It is a small park, right, compared to other parks in the country, but with rich ecosystem. Surrounded by a forested area, the reserve is home to elephants, leopards, buffaloes, rare sable antelopes, Maasai giraffes, heart beasts, among other wild animals, with the center of attraction being the sable antelopes. Shimba Hills is believed to be the only home in Kenya for the sable antelopes after they became extinct from other parks and reserves owing to massive hunting by lions. We have approximately 600 elephants uh, and uh, approximately 400 uh, buffaloes, then uh, like 20 uh, leopards. Other attractions at the park include the Sheldrick Falls, an impressive 25 meters high waterfall of fresh spring water. The reserve holds one of the largest coastal forests in East Africa after Arabuko Sokoke Forest with a density of hundreds of diverse species of birds and the bushy-tailed mongoose, among other small mammals. And after hours of jungle drive, Shimba Hills Resting Sports, located at the center of the park, offers the much-needed rest. The homes boast of African-inspired designs some floating on top of trees, 
offering a serene environment for meetings at the Jungle Bar and presenting students of botany with a closer view of the beauty of nature. Wale watu anataka sana kuwa away from the noises of the cities. This is the best place to come. To access the National Reserve from Mombasa, one will need to take a ferry at the Likoni Passageway to access the southern coastline. Erin Mchuma, Magical Saints in the county of Kwale. Welcoming you to the Gusi region are spectacular hills that are so characteristic of Gusi land, punctuated by myths among the community. One thing that is undoubtedly eye-catching to anyone visiting the Gusi region for the first time is the captivating hilly and vegetation sceneries. Right now, I'm seated on one of the Manga Hills, commonly referred to as Emanga by the Abagusi. It is a belief that they normally come here on certain months to have their problems solved from this end. The massive columns of Manga, Sameta, Kionganyo, and Nyanchoya Hills are covered by different species of trees and springs, offering a tranquil environment to anyone visiting the region. Locals believe hills have been a source of miracles that have helped the Abagusi. Among outstanding features for the Emanga Hills is this cross, believed to be 400 years old, with worshippers considering it a sacred spot where they hold their religious ceremonies. The Emanga Hills also host historical caves. Interestingly, before you visit the caves, it is a custom that you perform a ritual, a rite that looping the grass at the cave's entrance or else you attract a curse. But besides the picturesque landscape, another outstanding attraction beckons soapstone carvings, a practice so synonymous with the community here. It is a trade that has gained global acclaim and whose origin is the Tabaka Center, which is just 20 kilometers from Kisi Town. At Tabaka, one can sample amazing designs and carvings, from small size carvings to king size carvings. The Erin Nchuma, Magical Sense in the Gusi region. <laughs> Located in northern Kenya on 62,000 acres of land in Isolo County is Lewa Wildlife Conservancy. The conservancy was originally owned by a British family, the Craigs, in the 1920s, who transformed their cattle ranch to a rhino sanctuary and now a wildlife conservancy. Lewa boasts of a large number of black and white rhinos thanks to the rhino sanctuaries founded in the 1970s. The conservancy, also known as Lower Downs, play host to other members of the Big Five. <laughs> Giraffes, antelopes, gazelles, <laughs> gravy zebras, <laughs> with Dari Forest Reserve, also located within the conservancy. Unlike most ranches in the region, Lewa continue to value wildlife with the community surrounding the conservancy participating in wildlife conservation through the annual Lewa Marathon fundraising. On 
October 19th last year, the Conservancy gained a global recognition after Prince William of Wales proposed to Kate Middleton at Lewa. And perhaps to enhance the wildlife survival, a team to look into the welfare of animals and tourists, boosted armed game rangers are always at hand. So if you haven't been to the Lewa, make a date and discover the natural treasure that is the Lewa Wildlife Conservancy. Irene Mchuma, Magical Saints in the county of Isiolo. After a day-long encounter in the jungle, one can spend the night in the reserved splendid lodges. The lodges varies from stone-built African lodges, modern three-star hotels to luxury tented camps. For all the times that I've paid a visit to the northern continuation of the Serengeti National Reserve, I've undoubtedly enjoyed the natural beauty of the reserve besides the African culture being practiced by the communities surrounding the park. Some of these lodges offer night game drives aiming at spotting the night giants of the reserve. The reserve is approximately 650 square miles in southern Kenya, host to thousands of wild animals. And for a visit, it's a four-hour drive from Nairobi with a flight to the reserve, taking you 45 minutes from the capital. For Magical Sense, I'm Irene Mchuma. Salty Waters welcomes you to Malindi Marine National Park, a nature resource that can be accessed by the readily available glass bottom boats. Situated approximately six kilometers from the shores, the park established in 1968 prides itself as the first ever marine to be gazetted in the country. The park extends to the Media Creek neighboring Gederiz and Arabuko Sokoke Forest. The entire park is endowed with amazing features, including the fringing reefs, coral, and sea grass. However, for you to experience the underwater adventures, you need to dress up for the occasion. Now, this is what we call adventure, the Malindi Marine Park. Underneath is approximately six kilometers square, host to 135 species of fish, as well as corals. 
There are a variety of fish species including angelfish, barracuda, butterfly fish, goldfish, ducks, parrotfish, rabbitfish, sharks, snappers, sergeantfish, triggerfish as well as sergeant major and to arouse their appetite for adventure the trip to the marine park is often combined with seafood barbecues at the seasonal Seldunyedue island. The landmass is named after one of the islands at the Mediterranean Sea and fades away during high tides and appears during low tides at around midday. It's a very rich biodiversity. It's uh, also a, a bio, biosphere reserve. The most interesting things, especially now on the deep sea, is the, the dolphins. You know, the dolphins is the main attraction on on the other side, and also the fishing. Part of the fishing is also very interesting for our clients. The glass bottom boat ride is not only exciting but also allows those who cannot swim the opportunity to view the coral and colorful fish that crowd around the boat, expecting to be fed. The boat ride will, however, cost you a small fee. Erin Nchuma, Magical Sense in Malindi. starts in the Marwa in Kenya and ends in Serengeti, Tanzania in a rare show of ecological marvel. Interestingly, nature appeared to have worked in the wildebeest favor with the animals mating roughly at the same time in a phenomenon that ensures that calves are born during the same period to enhance their survival rates. The animals give birth on the plains of Ngongoro crater in Tanzania. Every July to September, over 2 million wildebeest cross over from Tanzania to Kenya in search of pastures commonly referred to as red hot grass or if you wish, elephant grass. During that period in Kenya, they will meet. Thereafter, return to Tanzania for procreation after gestation period of 220 days. The Mara, a land crossed by two rivers, the Mara and Takel, covers 650 square miles and is home to thousands of wild animals, including the hyenas, Masai giraffes, antelopes, zebras, crocodiles, and the big five. <laughs> However, besides the game drives are the reserve, the most exciting moment during this season is the wildebeest migration. At a casual glance, you would confuse them for a herd of cattle. The animals follow the wind to guide them in their expedition with the older ones, perhaps leading by example, showing the way. <laughs> However, when it's time to cross this river, it's a matter of survival for the fittest, with predators residing in these waters, pushing them to the extreme. A spectacle of its kind, which attracts thousands of local and international tourists to witness the rare wonder of nature. And having seen the Big Five, I think that's quite exciting. There's also the crossing of the wildebeest along the Masai Mara River, with a spectacle of the crocodiles waiting, waiting uh, clearly to have their meal. Irene Mchuma, Magical Sense in the Masai Mara.
natural beauty that is raw white sand beaches coupled with exciting boat rides blended with the coastal rich cultural heritage welcomes you to Watamu. The region is home to some of the most spectacular tourist attractions. A casual glance at this piece of ancient wax would confuse this mosque with a ruin. However, a critical look at the mosque reveals otherwise. Believed to be 800 years old, the mosque was a permanent settlement for Arabs who used it as a lookout for incoming vessels to the ancient port of Sita, with its legacy still upheld by the communities living in Watamu. With rich and unique islands, hundreds of tourists flock to the town who come here to relax and explore the nearly virgin habitat with experiences ranging from delicacies to cultural heritage. Watamu hosts a number of islands including Wakawaka, Sudi and the seasonal Seldunye Due Island. The island right behind me was named after one of the islands at the Mediterranean Sea. Interestingly, this island is seasonal. It disappears during the high tides and during the low tides, this is it. Interestingly, most of the visitors to Watamu are international tourists. And once I got here, I was lost for choice, including the delicacies on offer. If the Kenyans would like to see about their life underwater, life of birds, they have to come to Watamo, they have to come to Temple Point in the center of the bite life. Thrilled by the mangroves at the creek, hundreds flock the area to enjoy the rare spectre and the rare birds. People in Watamo refer to this kind of a boat as Dao, normally used for fishing activities as well as taking round tourists to explore the mangroves at the creek. Irene Mchuma, magical scenes at the Sudi Island in Watamu. Welcoming you to the Gusi region are the spectacular hills that are so characteristic of Gusi land, punctuated by myths among the community. The massive columns of Manga, Sameta, Kionganyo and Nyanchoya hills are covered by different species of trees and springs, offering a tranquil environment to anyone visiting the region. One thing that is undoubtedly eye-catching to anyone visiting the Gusi region for the first time is the captivating hilly and vegetation sceneries. Right now, I'm seated on one of the Manga Hills, commonly referred to as Emanga by the Abagusi. It is a belief that they normally come here on certain months to have their problems solved from this end. <laughs> Locals believe hills have been a source of miracles that have helped the Abagusi. Among outstanding features for the Emanga Hills is this cross, believed to be 400 years old, with worshippers considering it a sacred spot where they hold their religious ceremonies. The Emanga Hills also hosts historical caves. Interestingly, before you visit the caves, it is a custom that you perform a ritual, a rite that looping the grass at the cave's entrance or else you attract a curse. And who said wonders will ever end? The Abagusi believe that this cave could land you in Lake Victoria using that tunnel several kilometers from this point. Whether it's a fiction or a fact, time could tell. Interestingly, whenever you visit this cave, you have to come with some pieces of firewood to appease the ancestors. <laughs> But besides the pictures to landscape, another outstanding attraction beckons soapstone carvings, a practice so synonymous with the community here. It is a trade that has gained global acclaim and whose origin is the Tabaka Center, which is just 20 kilometers from Kisi Town. At Tabaka, one can sample amazing designs and carvings from small carvings to king-size carvings. 
the region also boasts of upcoming three-star hotels strategically located 100 kilometers from the famous Masai Mara Game Reserve, the eighth wonder of the world. The hotel offers luxurious rooms with an ideal environment to bird watches. Mm, it's just like people are just so cool. We're just eating ugali and boga. There, there are no complications of Nairobi. Yeah, Kisi is it's going to change. It's, it's in the countryside. But it's nice. It's a different experience. Yeah. Irene Mchuma, Magical Sense in the Guse region. <laughs> One of the most striking features that hits you upon arriving at the Savage Camp is the vicinity where the camp is located. Adjacent to the Sagana River, the Savage Camp enjoys a cool atmosphere away from the busy town life and offers the unique opportunity of a hotspot for vacations. The camp is located at the heart of Sagana suburbs offering a unique view of the Sagana River. Now this is one of the camping sites that Savage Garden has to offer. It is located in a vicinity where tourists can be able to have a view of the rural life. Upon arriving at the camp, we meet large groups of local and international tourists making way to the camp for the weekend, an indication of the camp's successful growth as a tourist destination. Here at the camp, we grow on eight acres of land, it's a beautiful place, nice fantastic place to get away from the hustle and bustle of Nairobi. Come down here, we've got multiple of of activities going on from whitewater rafting, kayaking, rock climbing, cycling, nature walks and just relaxing and enjoying yourself. One amazing aspect that can't be overlooked is how the camp's electricity is generated by turbines spinning dynamos thanks to the availability of a high water cover from the Sagana River. Revelers visiting the site are assured of enjoying a boat rift at the covers of the Sagana River. As observed here, tourists visiting the camp are enjoying a boat rift with inland tourists also not opposed to the sport. If yours is the type where you would rather relax at the midday sun after swimming or a fishing expedition, the camp offers this delight. Savage Camp, located 95 kilometers from Sagana Town, offers a unique getaway from the hustles and bustles of town life. For anyone seeking to have pleasure in swimming or a boat drift, this may just be the spot for you. Michael Geshoke for Magical Scenes. It all starts in the Mara in Kenya. Every June, the annual wild beast migration begins. Thousands of the wild beasts sweep across the plains, seeking out fresh pastures and procreation. A magical scene that will definitely end in the month of September in Serengeti, Tanzania. The Masai Mara covers 650 square miles and is home to thousands of wild animals, including hyenas, Maasai giraffe, crocodiles, and the big five. A game drive at the Mara Reserve will let you in on the serene lives of these creatures, but the icing of that cake this season remains the wild beast migration. One of the viewpoints for the migration is at the intersection of Mara and Takwell rivers. From a distance, you would confuse them for a herd of cattle. But just how do they manage to get the right path to their destination? The beast sends the noise in the storm. 
In spite of the splendor it brings, the journey from Serengeti to Mara is not all that rosy. The Mara River is infested with crocodiles, a scary experience for the beasts. You can always notice some hesitation since danger lurks beneath, but this river we must cross seems to be the spirit. However, not all are lucky all the time. It is a case of everyone for himself, a survival of the fittest. And courtesy of the risk that the creatures have undertaken, a picturesque view of an incredible hustle and bustle of the wild is here for the eye to behold. Those who had made it across regrouped themselves on the bank for the second phase of their journey to the Mara. The bulls and female wild beasts usually met during this season. Interestingly, the wild beast mating ritual is believed to last a day, ensuring that all calves are born on the very same time for greater protection. So if you haven't been to the Mara, make a date with the eighth wonder of the modern world this season. Irene Nchuma, Magical Sense in the Great Mara. The famous historic town of Malindi not only boasts of the paradise beaches but a rich cultural history that makes it a magical site for scholars and explores in its ancient days dating as far as 1499 AD. Malindi is home to the oldest remaining European monument set up by Vasco da Gama on his voyage to India. In Malindi stands one of the smallest and oldest church built before 1542 AD. One of the notable outstanding features for this small chapel is that its walls have stood intact over the centuries without replacement. This chapel is believed to be the first church in East Africa. Church worshippers today seem to have borrowed some aspects from these church traditions symbolized by the cross, the altar offering boxes and benches. Interestingly, in this church, the priest does not face the congregation, but all inclusive face the altar during worship evidenced by this design. The church window has also been designed in a way that only allows those inside to see the outsiders, as the church was commonly used by Portuguese army men who could spot the enemies easily. Outside the church stands a tombyard symbolizing the mark of respect to Portuguese soldiers and farmers who died during the war and were buried here. Irene Mchuma, Magical Sense in Malindi. Raw beaches and mangrove forests welcomes you to the Debaso village in Watamu at the north coast Kenya, a rich ecosystem that only the lucky few happen to know about. Beneath the surface lies the famous Media Creek surrounded by the mangrove trees, creating a warm weather for visitors in Watamu. The beaches along the coastline are some of the favored holiday destinations in the world, and it's with no doubt that these tourists chose the right holiday destination. I'm 
The delicacies are believed to be sourced fresh from the sea at the heart of the Indian Ocean. At a glance, you would be afraid to walk through this two kilometer low impact wooden construction for an adventure of a kind. The board gives guests an opportunity to absorb the beauty and magical atmosphere of the mangrove forest and creek channels. The area also provides good spot for bird watching, a strong connection with the ecosystem. <laughs> and when the sun dips spectacularly over the creek, a special menu is always at hand with delicacies ranging from prawns to crabs. <laughs> And in an effort to conserve the environment, stakeholders from the environment industry have taken an initiative to clean the area for a tranquil picture skill of the beachland. And so, if you're looking for a unique and exciting holiday experience, think of North Coast in Kenya. Every Nchuma, Magical Sins in Watamu. <laughs> At the foot of Mount Kenya, rolling grasslands and picturesque woodland stands one of the country's post tourism spot, a site where hundreds of nature lovers flock for leadership training and adventure. Despite the zero temperatures synonymous with the region, visitors are taken through various post tourism activities. It is a rigorous program that will see visitors take to jogging planned in preparation for the day's activities with ranges from rope racing, wall climbing and rock climbing. Exercises that are tailored to a team building among the participants. And for me, this particular activity struck me most. It is called Carbonate Sports. And this is the only place it is available in the whole of East Africa. On the flip side, your endurance is what will make you a winner. And first team to reach at the top before flying down is the ultimate champion, a military kind of training undertaking. A truly unforgettable adventure for anyone willing to venture in such unforgiving terrain. Stakeholders in the leadership training and adventure industry are now planning a post tourism reality show to be filmed in the country this year, attracting representatives from all corners of the world. It's just the eye that scares you, otherwise, nothing else. Because you know the system is very safe. We usually say that here we don't punish readers because we deal with the grown ups, but circumstances will punish you. So when they get up, that is trust. As a reader, they need also to, need to trust. Trust on the equipment, trust on the facilitator. So when they go and transfer that, as they trust their seniors, they also need to trust their juniors, they're able to delegate. So if you have plans to unwind in the jungle, the hills of Mount Kenya could be the place to be for an escapade, not only of the mountain and the jungle, but which will stretch your mental strength to the extreme. Irene Mchuma, Magical Scenes on the Hills of Mount Kenya.
Kenya has for decades featured among the list of the best vacation zones in the world, offering unrivaled tranquil spots ranging from the marine parks to the raw sand beaches, a legacy that continued to develop. This despite some of its hidden treasures failing to get the requisite publicity to attract more tourists. Such is the fate that appears to have befallen the Marafa Health Kitchen in Malindi. The magical site resembles a gold mining field a spot which offers a picturesque view when the sun sets. The area, also referred to as Nyari, meaning the place broken by itself, was developed by the local community in 2003. <laughs> And with time, the marvels of nature, including wind and rain, withered the ridge of sandstone into a set of gorges. Mpaka mwakanuwa 2003, ambapo jamii walikuja wakaone ya kwamba waneza kutumia maali hapa kwa kuleta mapato. Na kikundi ya vijana wakanjiunga, wakanjiandikisha. Na kutoka pale wakaanza kupata wageni pole pole. Mpaka ule akati ambapo Nisha Kenya mikuja kanzisha kazi, kazi yawa pa mwaka wa ilfumbile na sita. It's depression so original presenting a glimpse of experiences in the world. That is the rural Kenyan coast. A drive to the area is an experience in itself, offering a rare view of a combination of red soil, white chalky soil and white rock. At the Marafa Depression, guided walks are highly recommended, albeit at a small fee. However, access to this corner of the world might prove a treasurer's venture for exploration enthusiasts as no vehicles reach the area. Irene Nchuma, Magical Sins, in the county of Malindi. Coast province is well acclaimed by ravelers and inland tourists in pursuit of a gateway from their normal busy schedules in their quest for pleasure and relaxation. This year's Mashujade was embraced by pomp and color around the country. In Malindi Coast province, the experience was no different from the rest of the country in the wake of the unveiling of the statue of Mekatili Luamenza. Mekatili Luamenza, an iconic figure in the province, is remembered for her prowess in the fight for the country's freedom, like many other profound histories among several Kenyan communities. The event was graced in different aspects of culture in the Miji Kanda communities. It was a landmark in the making for members of the Miji Kanda community who unveiled Mekatili Luamenza's statue at the Uhuru Gardens. Visiting elders from different communities called for the people of Kenya to be able to live in harmony irrespective of their background. The event was graced in different aspects of culture by the Mijikanda communities. Songs and dance featured most part of the day with processions leading from the Malindi Museum. One aspect of culture that can't be overlooked is the mode of dressing of the Mijikanda communities and their cultural musical instruments that will leave you marveling at their fine display of arts. We are relaunching the statue of Mekatilili Wamenza in Malindi, in uh, Mekatilili Wamenza Gardens in Malindi. We are also celebrating the first Mashuja Day in Kenya. Uh, this has a great impact on our community in Malindi because the occasion has attracted many communities from up country and nearby. A trip to Malindi town offers the chance to view some prehistoric buildings used by Arab merchants in colonial times and have remained rooted since the inception of independence. Another fascinating aspect of the town is that one can enjoy a tour around its suburbs courtesy of the expansive tuk-tuk business that is thriving in the coconut region. Malindi town is situated at the banks of the beautiful covers of the Indian Ocean and offers the delight of enjoying the midday sun while having a swim or enjoying a boat ride. Now for anyone taking a trip to Malindi, the town is said to unravel the cultural entities of different communities such as the Meiji Kendo. And the trip would be incomplete without a swim 
or the pleasant view of the Indian Ocean. Michael Gishuki for Magical Scenes. One of the most striking features that hits you upon arriving at the Savage Camp is the vicinity where the camp is located. Adjacent to the Sagana River, the Savage Camp enjoys a cool atmosphere away from the busy town life and offers the unique opportunity of a hotspot for vacations. The camp is located at the heart of Sagana suburbs offering a unique view of the Sagana River. Now this is one of the camping sites that Savage Garden has to offer. It is located in a vicinity where tourists can be able to have a view of the rural life. Upon arriving at the camp, we meet large groups of local and international tourists making way to the camp for the weekend, an indication of the camp's successful growth as a tourist destination. Here at the camp, we grow on eight acres of land, it's a beautiful place, nice fantastic place to get away from the hustle and bustle of Nairobi. Come down here, we've got multiple of of activities going on from whitewater rafting, kayaking, rock climbing, cycling, nature walks and just relaxing and enjoying yourself. One amazing aspect that can't be overlooked is how the camp's electricity is generated by turbines spinning dynamos thanks to the availability of a high water cover from the Sagana River. Revelers visiting the site are assured of enjoying a boat rift at the covers of the Sagana River. As observed here, tourists visiting the camp are enjoying a boat rift with inland tourists also not opposed to the sport. If yours is the type where you would rather relax at the midday sun after swimming or a fishing expedition, the camp offers this delight. Savage Camp, located 95 kilometers from Sagana Town, offers a unique getaway from the hustles and bustles of town life. For anyone seeking to have pleasure in swimming or a boat drift, this may just be the spot for you. Michael Geshoke for Magical Scenes. If it's not for the Ocampo Six traditional prayers held recently at the shrine of Mkrueni Wanyagathanga, it could be the 49th year and counting for the almost forgotten historical site. The last time elders converged at this shrine in Moranga was in 1952 when they were in the face of defeat by the colonialists during the freedom struggle. The shrine is believed to be the origin of the Agikuyu community, with their historical background evident by these Agikuyu traditional paraphernalia, such as guards, calabashes, pots and horns, used to sip the traditional beer commonly referred to as Muratina, among other things. Not to forget the women's traditional Agikuyu attire, representing all the nine tribes of Agikuyu. Muranga Hills cast across massive terrain down to Mathea River, adjacent to man-made caves captivated by sand harvesting activity in Moranga. The bends along Mathea River are said to have been in existence since time immemorial, triggering many creative minds, including music compositions about the bands by local musicians. An enormous railway bridge, one of the highest in Africa, is stretched along Maragua River with hundreds of local tourists thronging the Wanji area for a breathtaking view of the bridge. The county also plays host to historical graveyards, with the most remarkable one being the one for the first Moranga District Commissioner, Fort G. Hall. Muranga County, situated on the scenic hills of central Kenya, is steadily setting the pace in boosting domestic tourism in the country. Efforts that could perhaps bear fruit with the presence of this three-star hotel along the Nairobi-Muranga Highway. 
The elegant hotel plays host to hundreds of tourists at affordable rates, attributed to the region's tranquil environment. An ordinary room for local tourists costs 1,500 shillings, while a VIP guest room, well equipped, goes for 2,500 shillings per night. For domestic tourists and those who want to escape the hustle and bustle of town life, Muranga County offers a near one-stop shop solution where you can unwind by watching scenic landscapes and physical features embedded in rich history. So for those who cherish rekindling memories of days gone by and when life was less sophisticated, a visit to Muranga and its warm hospitality. One of the most striking features that hits you upon arriving at the Savage Camp is the vicinity where the camp is located. Adjacent to the Sagana River, the Savage Camp enjoys a cool atmosphere away from the busy town life and offers the unique opportunity of a hotspot for vacations. The camp is located at the heart of Sagana suburbs offering a unique view of the Sagana River. Now this is one of the camping sites that Savage Garden has to offer. It is located in a vicinity where tourists can be able to have a view of the rural life. Upon arriving at the camp, we meet large groups of local and international tourists making way to the camp for the weekend, an indication of the camp's successful growth as a tourist destination. Here at the camp, we grow on eight acres of land, it's a beautiful place, nice fantastic place to get away from the hustle and bustle of Nairobi. Come down here, we've got multiple of of activities going on from whitewater rafting, kayaking, rock climbing, cycling, nature walks and just relaxing and enjoying yourself. One amazing aspect that can't be overlooked is how the camp's electricity is generated by turbines spinning dynamos thanks to the availability of a high water cover from the Sagana River. Revelers visiting the site are assured of enjoying a boat rift at the covers of the Sagana River. As observed here, tourists visiting the camp are enjoying a boat rift with inland tourists also not opposed to the sport. If yours is the type where you would rather relax at the midday sun after swimming or a fishing expedition, the camp offers this delight. Savage Camp, located 95 kilometers from Sagana Town, offers a unique getaway from the hustles and bustles of town life. For anyone seeking to have pleasure in swimming or a boat drift, this may just be the spot for you. Michael Geshoke for Magical Scenes.